dumping of waste. Uh, Trafigura was implicated in a case in 2006 where over 100,000 people in Cote d'Ivoire sought medical assistance because of the illegal dumping of waste there. Another example is the export of substandard gasoline to Africa. Uh, Many companies, including British Petroleum, are implicated with the export of substandard gasoline uh, to developing countries, which is resulting in serious health effects in those countries. The export of banned pesticides, I've spoken about this myself and also together with the Special Rapporteur on Food, of how this is of grave human rights concern. Uh, Syngenta, for example, continues to manufacture and export the highly toxic pesticide Paraquat from UK facilities to developing countries. Even one teaspoon of of this pesticide is lethal enough to kill. Uh, The sale of dangerous consumer products. There's a company, Reckitt Benkiser, based in the UK, which has been manufacturing uh, various consumer products and is responsible for 90 to 100 deaths in South Korea. Extractive Industries, BHP Billiton and Valet, have been implicated in the release of 50 million tons of iron ore waste in Brazil in the San Marco incident. But beyond that, BHP is also implicated in the dumping of toxic waste in Papua New Guinea, as well as excess water use in Chile. Finally, just briefly touching on access to justice and remedies, it was brought to my attention that among workers, uh, less than 1% of sick workers are able to receive compensation in the UK for non-asbestos-related occupational diseases. This is highlighted by the case of farmers who, for many decades, have sought an effective remedy for exposure to organophosphates that they were exposed to, and many have been unsuccessful in, in that. That pretty much concludes the, the UK report, too. So happy to take any questions, if there are questions and comments. Are there any uh, monitoring mechanisms, or is it just case by case? Uh, in, in which case? The UK, or...? In, in general, and maybe there are some countries they have... Um, Mm -hmm. There are several examples of monitoring mechanisms. There's something called the PRTR, the Pollutant Release and Transfer Registries within the EU, and also the Toxics Release Inventory in the U.S. This is important for realizing the right to information about what sort of emissions are being produced by companies. What's the name? In the U.S., it's the Toxics Release Inventory. And it's a, it's a useful tool for seeing what companies are doing. The challenge, however, is that it only applies to certain facilities, it only covers certain substances, and so there's still information gaps about the full scope. Furthermore, it's not a global instrument, and, and so many countries, particularly developing countries, still don't have adequate information, monitoring information, about what companies are doing. In my mission to Kazakhstan two years ago, uh, one of the challenges there was that, was that the government was asking the company to do the monitoring and to provide them the information. Um, there was an incident where about 24 children living near a oil and gas condensate field in Kazakhstan suddenly developed seizures. Uh, many of them still suffer from seizures today. It turned out that the monitoring stations that the company had installed were, I think, 10 meters high. And so there was no reasonable way for these monitoring stations to actually monitor what the children were exposed to closer to the ground. Um, And so it was suspected that hydrogen sulfide was released through a a power failure at this facility, and then the gas um, children were because they're closer to the ground, more affected than adults. And so that led to the seizures. But I think that's an example of why we need stronger monitoring around the world. I was just surprised by the um, the report on on the UK. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty grim and lack a bit of context comparing with other uh, uh, Western European countries to see how really is it that bad in the UK. 
Yeah, also, I mean, Brexit is not yet uh, there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hasn't been, I think it will take maybe a few more years before it's fully really yeah. implemented. So it looks a bit very uh, uh, speculative to say today that it might be even worse. I think um, what needs to also be kept in mind is that the UK has also not been the most progressive within the EU when it comes to environmental regulation. Whether you're looking at chemicals regulation, whether you're looking at air pollution, typically the UK has been objecting to various standards that end up being set by the EU. In particular on pesticides, they've been a very vocal critic of the EU pesticide laws. And now, looking at the statements from these farmer groups, which are largely supported by other industry interests, there is a large push for deregulation. I mean, I totally agree that, you know, there's, there's nothing concrete yet uh, to critique. But I think this is, this is a, a serious concern. And um, I think because the U.K. is such a large market and has such a large chemical industry, it's a risk. But I, I hope that, you know, the UK proves me wrong when they finally come up with their, their Brexit package and they remain a part of EU institutions on environmental issues and they contribute as much as they have been. But in my discussions with the UK, it, it really seems like they are not committing themselves like they have, for example, with worker rights and worker standards. They've clearly said that we are not going to lo lower these worker standards, but on the environment, they are so vague that it's very suspicious. But that's that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. You also asked about comparison between the UK and other EU countries. Unfortunately, these um, these missions are difficult to do like a comparison. But what you could do if you wanted, there's a a report on my mission to Germany, and there uh, you could see what I said about that country in comparison. Thanks. There are uh, regulations um, by the Professor Regime, mm -hmm. the guidelines. Yes, yes. That uh, companies have to, to respect uh, human rights and uh, environmental mm -hmm. standards. And uh, now in, in October, at the end of October, there is a again, uh, some people try to negotiate uh, a legally binding uh, agreement. Do you think these guidelines, these rigid guidelines, are good enough, or does it need a legally binding convention? Hmm. Well, I think I think one of the the areas that the Ruggy principles could be improved upon is the issue of extraterritorial obligations yeah. of states, and to the extent that this treaty is able to sort of provide more legally binding standards, more clarity around what states need to do extraterritorially, I think it would be very much welcome. Um, the challenge, of course, is will countries sign up to this treaty? Will they ratify this treaty? So there you go. If you didn't know it already, it's a dysfunctional state and we need out. So that's it for this time. I'll hopefully be doing another interview during the week. And given that that was quite a depressing listen, I think it's probably an idea to finish with something funny. And although it talks about the Republicans in America, I'm sure you can see some similarities with the Conservatives in the United Kingdom. Speak to you next time. Offshore drilling is completely safe. <laughs> You're getting sleepy. Cuts for the rich create new jobs. You're getting sleepy. <laughs> Financial corporations will police themselves, and illegal aliens are stealing all your pens. <laughs> now, when I count to three and snap my fingers, you'll awake refreshed and vote Republican. <laughs> White people are the real victims of racism. You're getting sleepy. Fox News is fair and balanced. Sleepy. 
Health care is a privilege and not a right. We can work together to wipe out the middle class. Now when I count to three and snap my fingers, you will awake confused and vote Republican. I'm not saying Barack Obama is a foreign-born Islamist puppy eater. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you decide. There's no evidence to suggest that Nancy Pelosi is a thousand-year-old Nazi vampire. But that's what I heard. Somebody said that. It was me. Democrats want to put you in a re-education camp and kill your grandma and bring Stalin back to life. Now when I count to three and snap my fingers, Republican. and we'll prove it. John Boehner uses no tanning products. Sleepy. New Gingrich doesn't make shit up. Sleepy. Ben Quayle is gonna knock the hell out of Washington. Ronald Reagan. Count to three and steal the White House China. You'll vote Republican. When I snap my fingers and invade Ontario, you'll vote Republican. And when I drag the nation through eight years of carnage and incompetence and leave the place a bigger mess than Lindsay Lowen's trailer, then blame the Democrats for cleaning up too slow. You will awake refreshed, confused, and somewhat paranoid, and you'll remember nothing. <laughs> and vote Republican. <laughs> One, two, three. Mitt Romney, everybody. Yeah.